Hello everyone, welcome to a new session of your mathematics class. In this chapter, we are going to see the third part of our chapter number 2, Polynomials. In the last two chapters, we were discussing about polynomials, which are the types of polynomials and how polynomials can be classified and the features regarding polynomials. Now, in this session, we are going to learn two important properties or theorems called Remainder Theorem and Factor Theorem. To learn Remainder Theorem, you need to have an idea about few things. One of such is Division Algorithm of Numbers. Division Algorithm of Numbers is a simple thing that you have been learning since you have learned division. For example, if you are asked to divide 15 by 6, you will do this process. You will divide 15 by 6. How many times 6 in 15? Twice. So you will write 2 and you will get the remainder 1. So 3 is the remainder, right? Then we can write this 15 as 15 as the divisor 6 into the quotient 2 plus the remainder. Who is the remainder here? 3. So this is called the division algorithm. You are not asked to learn in this chapter, but it's important to understand since this is a basic concept in mathematics. I'll repeat. The number 15 can be written as the product of the divisor and quotient. Divisor and quotient and plus the number 3. What happens if we divide 12 by 6? This is an example. Now let's see the division algorithm in, for a different number. If you are dividing 6 by 12, let's see what happens. You are asked to divide 12 by 6. Then the same process, you will divide 12, 6. How many times? Twice. So, what is the remainder that you got? The remainder is 0. Then also you can write the dividend 12 as the product of the divisor and the quotient. Who is the divisor? Divisor is 6 and the quotient is 2 plus. There is no need to write, but since the division algorithm needs to be satisfied, you should write 0. And if the remainder is 0, then we can conclude the dividend is a, sorry, divisor is a factor of dividend. That is, 6 is clearly a factor of 12. You all know that. See, 6 is a factor of whom? 12. So, this is an idea that you should possess. We will use this idea. So, to understand, I have repeated the same. Now, Next, we are going to see the division of polynomials. So, we have learned what is the division algorithm. Now, let's see how will you proceed with the division of polynomials. For example, you are given a polynomial 3x cube. So, I should change the heading. Now, we are moving division of division of polynomials. Now, this can be done in two ways or two steps. First, we will see the division. I hope you remember what's a monomial. You should know what's a monomial before getting into this section because we are learning the division of polynomial by a monomial. So, it's necessary to know what is a monomial. For example, if we want to divide a polynomial p of x, how will you represent a polynomial? It's written as p of x is equal to. Now, here is a polynomial for you. x cube plus 3x square plus 5x plus 6. This is clearly a polynomial. Now, if you are asked to divide divide p of x by x. You are asked to divide this polynomial by a monomial. Now, can you say whether it's a monomial? Of course, because there is only one term. Only x is there, so that's a monomial. Now, the question is to divide this polynomial by this monomial. It's very easy. All you need to do is to write, okay, x cube plus 3x square plus 5x plus 6 
all divided by the polynomial x. Now this is an easy method that you have been doing. Since the denominator is uh, only one term, you can split each term by giving denominators to each term. So what happens is that x cubed by x plus 3x square by x plus 5x by x plus 6 by x. Now it's easy to write the answer. What is x cubed by x? It's x square plus 3x square by x is x square by x is x. So it happens 3x plus 5x by x is you can cancel these x's. 5 plus, you cannot further proceed with this one. So, this is 6, sorry, 6 by x. Actually, this does not, or uh, this is no longer a polynomial because what happens to the power of x in the last term, it becomes minus 1 when taken to the numerator. So, this is not longer polynomial. No worries, we were just asked to divide this particular polynomial by a monomial. So, no, uh, there is no necessity that the answer should be a polynomial itself. So this is the concept that you should learn when you are asked to divide a polynomial by a monomial. I hope you understood. Now let's see how to divide a polynomial by another polynomial. We will see to that. Now let's see how to divide or how can we divide a polynomial by another polynomial. In the last part we saw how to divide a polynomial by a monomial. But what if there are more than one term in the given polynomial? Let's see how this can be done. A question is written. If P of x is equal to 3x square plus x minus 1 and Q of x is equal to x plus 1. So we have a polynomial and another polynomial. And we are asked to find the remainder when P of x is divided by Q of x. I hope you understood the question. Let's track it down. See, just like this one. If you are given a number... 21 and you are given another number 8. You are asked to divide 21 by 8 and what is the remainder when you do so? How will you do this one? 21 by 8. How many times 2? So 5. What is the remainder? 5. You need to do the very same process. That's all. Now, I think you have already learned the division of polynomials. If no, just listen very carefully. I am going to demonstrate the same for you. First of all, this is the dividend and this is our divisor because we are asked to divide q of x by sorry p of x by q of x. So you should write just as the normal way. This is your division process. You will write 3x square plus x minus 1 here and x plus 1 as the divisor. Now first step that you need to do is to check well take the first term of the divisor take the first term of the divisor and divide it by or you should divide the di first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor who is the first term of the dividend 3x square by x what is 3x square by x it is 3x now do the process of multiplication do both the terms of the divisor 3x into x is and write here 3x square then 3x plus 1 3x into plus 1 is plus 3x now subtract just as we do in the process of division so what happens x the process that we are going to do is subtraction we can do from right hand side x minus 3x even though the symbol is plus you should do the subtraction process which will result as x minus 3x as for kind of if there is any confusion i will write here x minus 3x what is x minus 3x it is minus 2x right now 3x square minus x square 3x square minus x square is 0 so we don't need to do anything here now just as in the normal division take the next number to the bottom so it happens to be minus 2x minus 1. Now repeat the same process. Take the first term in the lower part minus 2x. Divide x by that term. So minus 2x by x. What is minus 2x by x? It is minus 2x by x. So x and x get cancelled. So you should write a minus 2 here. Now repeat the process that we already did here. 
minus 2 into x. What's minus 2 into x? It's nothing but minus 2x. Then minus 2 into 1. Minus 2 into plus 1. That is minus 2. So you should write minus 2 here. Now, the same process of subtraction must be done here. This is our subtraction process. Then what happens? Minus 1, minus, minus 2. If, you, if anybody is having any doubt, you should write in the working column or anywhere. And make sure you are not getting the calculation wrong. If you get any number wrong here, then the convection of all answer will be changed. So what happens here is minus 1. This is minus 1. And we need to subtract. Subtract who? Minus 2. So this happens minus 1 plus 2. That is plus 1. So the answer is plus 1. Now is there anyone else to be taken down? No. So what's the remainder? Reminder is plus 1. So you can write. Therefore, reminder is equal to plus 1. Now that's our answer. The question was to find the remainder when it is done so. Now, we are going to important part of this section. Actually, to find the remainder, we need not always necessarily do this process, but a shortcut to do the same. Listen very carefully. I am going to demonstrate it for you. First of all, write down the polynomial that is given to you. Who is the polynomial given to you? It is P of X. And what is P of X? P of X is 3x square plus x minus 1. Now, by which number we are asked to divide x plus 1, right? If x plus 1 is given, we should find the value of p of minus 1. p of minus 1. You know how to find the value of p of minus 1. Why I have took x plus 1? Why I have took p of minus 1 is that it was x plus 1 that was given or said to be divided. So it was x plus 1 given. We will equate it to 0. Then what we will get? x is equal to minus 1. That is why we choose p of minus 1. We will do another problem based on the same method. Then you will understand further. So far this understand. If you are asked to divide by x plus 1. Then take p of minus 1 and find the value of p of x at x is equal to minus 1. What happens? p of minus 1. You have learned this method to find the value. So that is not going to be a tough, difficult for you. So 3 into, instead of x we need to put minus 1. So 3 into minus 1 square plus minus 1 minus 1. What happens? 3 into minus 1 square is 1 itself. 3 into 1 is 3 minus 1 minus 1. So what is it? 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. See the remainder? This will be true for all the polynomials. Let us see another example. Let us see another example for this particular case. In this question, we are asked to divide 3x raised to 4 minus 4x cubed minus 3x minus 1 by x minus 1. Let us try to do this one. We should make a small arrangement, rearrangement by writing this polynomial because there is no term of x square in this particular polynomial. So it is better to make an adjustment to avoid the confusion. So you should write 3x raised to 4 minus 4x cubed plus 0x square minus 3x minus 1. And who is the divisor? Divisor is x minus 1. Let us try to do this one. First step, 3x raised to 4 divided by x. What is that? 3x cube. 3x cube into x is 3x raised to 4. Then 3x cube into minus 1. 3x cube into minus 1 is minus 3x cube. Now division. Oh sorry, subtraction. This is the subtraction symbol. 4 minus 4x cube minus minus 3x cube. What it will be? Minus 4x cube minus minus 3x cube turns out minus 4x cube plus 3x cube. So it is minus x cube plus 0x square. Now minus x cube by x. Minus x cube by x. If there is any doubt, you can clarify. Minus x cube by x is minus x square. Now 
minus x square into x is minus x cube then minus x square into minus 1 that will be plus x square right because there is a negative symbol here there is another negative symbol in minus 1 so minus and minus becomes plus x square into 1 is plus 1 x square or simply x square now the subtraction process okay here already it's 0 that's why i haven't told you okay 3x raised to 4 minus 3x raised to 4 is 0 now 0 x square minus x square that is minus x square minus x cube minus minus x cube will become 0 so i'm not writing that one now write down the next member or next term that is minus 3x minus x square by x or oh, it's minus x square by x 1x get cancelled so we'll write a minus x over here don't get confused with my x okay so minus x into x is minus x square minus x into minus 1 negative and negative becomes positive x into 1 is x so that's it now what happens let's see again the subtraction process minus 3x minus x that is minus 4x i hope it's clear this again becomes 0 minus 3x minus x is minus 4x now minus 4x divided by x minus 4x divided by x this x and x gets cancelled that is minus 4 so we'll write minus 4 here now the reverse process minus 4 into x is okay before that we should write down the next term to that over here it's minus 1 now minus 4x by x is already i have written minus 4 now minus 4 into x is minus 4x then minus 4 into minus 1 what's minus 4 into minus 1 minus and minus x plus so plus 4 is written now this last step minus 4 minus 1 minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5 so the remainder is so the remainder is minus 5 so that's one way to find the remainder now we have learned a small trick to find the remainder let's see whether we are going to get the same remainder if you do that in that way so if there is anybody who is not getting the division process correctly please watch the video again and there are so many questions in your textbook that is to be divided uh, that is uh, that is to be done using the division process so keep on doing that now let's see whether we are getting the remainder as plus five now let's see whether you will get the same reminder when we use the method that we have just learned so let's write what was the remainder that we got the remainder was minus five let it be here now what was the what was the step that we followed first of all you should write the polynomial that is given to us so i will write the answer first write the polynomial it's better to follow this particular way first write the polynomial given to us polynomial was 3x raised to 4 minus 4x cube minus 3x minus 1. Now what was the second polynomial given to us that is to be divided q of x is equal to minus 1. Now first of all you should put q of x is equal to 0. Who is q of x? That is x minus 1 is equal to 0 or you will get x is equal to 1. So we need to find the value of p of 1. So let's see what is the value of p of 1. p of 1 will be, how will you find p of 1? Put 1 wherever you see x, that's all. So 3 into 1 raised to 4 minus 4 into 1 cube minus 3 into 1 minus 1. 3 into 1 raised to 4 is 3 itself, minus 1 cube is 1, so minus 4. Minus 3 into 1 is 3 minus 1. Just add the negative terms first, 3 then what happens minus 4 minus 3 is minus 7 minus 1 minus 1 is 8 so the answer will become 3 minus 8 or minus 5 so instead of writing the whole step like division process it's better to write or better to follow this method provided if you are only asked to find the remainder only if you are asked to find the remainder you can follow this method i hope you understood this one 
So far we have been discussing about the details that was required to say the base of remainder theorem. Now we are eligible to say or to conceive what is remainder theorem. Let's see. The statement says, let P of X be any polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 1. Of course the polynomial should be of degree greater than 1 or 1 itself. Now and let A be any real number. Stop. Let or if P of X is divided by the linear polynomial X minus A, then the remainder is same as P of A. If this sentence is a bit difficult to understand, let's understand using the example that we just did before. It says when 3x raised to 4 minus 4x cube minus 3x minus 1, we were given a polynomial and by which polynomial we were asked to divide? It was by x minus 1 and we did the uh, division process and what was the remainder that we obtained? It was minus 5, right? Then we found the value of p of 1 also. What was the value of p of 1? That was also minus 5. So effectively in order to find the remainder of any polynomial p of x when a linear polynomial x minus x minus a is divided in case of x minus a what was here x minus 1 so it's effectively uh, the same to find the value of p of a in this case it's p of 1 so this is the concept of remainder theorem please read the theorem once or twice till you understand concept is very crisp and very fine it's instead of finding or instead of using the division process that is if we divide p of x by another polynomial x minus a you will get a remainder right you will get a remainder something say some um, c you will get some remainder c that same value will be obtained if you find the value of p of a it will be c that's what remainder theorem says i hope you understood now let's see some so problems based on this theorem. Now let's see some questions based on the theorem that we have just learned. This is one of your exercise questions in exercise 2.3. Let's try to solve. First question, find the reminder when x cube plus 3x square plus 3x plus 1 is divided by x plus 1. So what's the step that we should follow? First write down the polynomial that is given to us p of x that is x cube plus 3x square plus 3x plus 1. Now, what is the polynomial that is to be divided? First one, x plus 1. So, you can write the second polynomial given is q of x is equal to x plus 1. First step, put q of x is equal to 0. Then, x plus 1 is equal to 0. x is equal to minus 1. So, you just need to find the value of p of minus 1. Further, when you proceed to do problems, you don't need to follow this method. You can immediately write if you want to find the value or remainder when it is divided by x plus 1. You can just write p of minus 1. This is only because we are dealing with the first time and using the very uh, elaborate method. You can proceed without doing all this process. Anyway, you need to find the value of p of minus 1 here. Very old process, minus 1 cube plus 3 into minus 1 square plus 3 into minus 1 plus 1. So that is minus 1 plus minus 1 cube is minus 1. Minus 1 square is 1. So 3 into 1 is 3. Then 3 into minus 1 is minus 3 plus 1. Now what happens? This 3 and this 3 can be cancelled. Minus 1 and plus 1 gets cancelled. So the remainder is 0. Now the second part says the value or reminder when this polynomial is very same so i should not have read it so p of x, the first step itself x cube plus 3x square plus 3x plus 1 now what's the second question in fact i'm doing the third question second one is really easy third question is x so you can write i would recommend you to do the problems without looking or uh, watching the video once you start doing the problem, even if, if you are not getting, then you can come and uh, follow this video. So I would recommend to pause the video and try to do by yourself. So the part that is to be divided is q of x is equal to x. As we are doing 
q of x is equal to 0 that is x is equal to 0 so you need to find the value of p of 0 nothing confusion so p of 0 is equal to 0 cube plus 3 into 0 square plus 3 into 0 plus 1 so all the terms take 0 so 0 plus 0 plus 0 except this one so the remainder is 1 now let's see the fourth one fourth one is x plus 5 so q of x here is different it is x plus 5 as we are doing uh, all day long put q of x is equal to 0 with q of x x plus 5 is equal to 0 then x is equal to minus 5 so we should find the value of p of minus 5 so it happens minus pi cube plus 3 into minus pi square plus 3 into minus pi plus 1 so this happens minus pi cube plus 3 pi square why because minus pi square is plus pi square plus minus 3 into minus pi is minus 3 pi plus 1 so that is our answer now last part when q of x is equal to or when this polynomial is going to be divided by 5 plus 2x so you can write q of x is equal to 5 plus 2x first step put q of x is equal to 0 that is 5 plus 2x is equal to 0 then 2x is equal to minus 5 x is equal to minus 5 by 2 so we can easily find the value of p of x p of x at the p x is equal to minus 5 by 2 that is minus 5 by 2 let's see instead of x you put minus 5 by 2 that is minus 5 by 2 whole cube plus 3 into minus 5 by 2 whole square plus 3 into minus 5 by 2 plus 1 now it's all about simplification minus 5 whole cube is minus 125 divided by 2 cube is 8 plus 3 into minus 5 square is my, uh, plus 25 so it happens 3 into 25 divided by 4 plus 3 into minus 5 is minus 15 divided by 2 plus 1 now you can write minus 125 by 8 plus 75 by 4 minus 15 by 2 plus 1 now you just need to simplify this one and you will get an answer so this is how it is to be done